Okay, call the meeting to order. If you would please um, review the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We start at going down the meeting and all that stuff, I would like to just say um, Richard LaPierre passed away, one of our board members here just recently, just a few few days ago. And uh, I just want you to know he passed away. What's seven? Um, top 10 of the agenda. Are you motion? I would say to adapt the current agenda, the revised one, the second one that I got. Yeah. Oh, any comments or questions by the board? <coughs> All in favor? Mm -hmm. Motion carried. Approval of minutes of 724.23 and 727.23. Make a motion to approve the minutes of 724.23 and 727.23. You a second? Yeah, I would second that. Yeah. Any comments or questions by the board? <coughs> All in favor? Any opposed? Motion carry. Move on to the road report. So since our last meeting, we graded New Boston Road, High Road, uh, Lewis Road in its entirety. We broke that into three different sections because it's such a long road. Um, and we've got from the south end to the north end completely done. We also added material to all those roads as well. Uh, we also did a quick grade of Ward Road. It was in pretty rough shape. We had our pre-construction meeting for Watkins culvert um, replacement. Right now, there's currently two culverts side by side, and that's going to be replaced with a squash tube culvert. Um, and I had to come out and, and do a little pre-construction meeting and, and just discuss what couldn't couldn't be done during the construction process of that. Uh, we've we've been cutting the brush and trees on Watkins still. We met with the boom mower operator and he's started the brush cutting. So if anybody sees a green John Deere tractor with a boom mower out and about, it's uh, the guy that we contracted to do our, our roadside lawn for the year. Um, bear with us if it gets a little messy in the road or whatever, you know, give a call to the, the town office and, and we'll come out with our blower and we'll, we'll clear the road out of the way. Um, we went over some of our upcoming MRGP work with Sarah Pelkey, so we can get started on that. I had a question about the repeater status, if we've made any grounds on that, actually. So I'd really like to see that get done before wintertime hits, and we have those dead zones, and hopefully that'll alleviate our, our radio silence in some of our areas where we also don't have cell service. In the event of an emergency or, or something, so I'm just kind of hoping to get that, that push working, along. Are we working on that, or waiting for? So we were waiting for FCC approval, which we got the approval. Yeah, and working with um, Green Mountain Power um, to put it on the pole on the where the village uh, water reservoir is, mm -hmm. and. Uh, they're working on it. I'm going to circle um, Nate Bourne in on it at the fire department because um, it's a lot of it's over my head. But yeah, we're working on it. We uh, we had a lot of damage on Pond Hill Ranch and Pond Hill Road. Um, on Hill Road is off the Castleton side, down from the ranch. It's, it's a lot of people think that that's uh, actually Castleton, but it's still Polney. It goes up towards Point Point Tech Road, and on the other side it goes to it interlocks to Staso, turns into Staso Road. Uh, we had a lot of damage washes, just continuous washes over there. So we've we've been doing a lot of work over there. 
adding material, grading, regrading, adding more material. Um, that's probably going to be a problem so we can actually ditch it because without a ditch, the water's got to go somewhere and it rides at the lowest point of the road and just keeps eroding in the way. And so all that material that you put on ends up in the ditch or downstream or whatever. Um, we came in for a tree down on Ward Road on 811. Took care of that. And uh, we had to do a little bank stabilization on Fenton Road where we had to wash across the up toward the top of Fenton Road by the Quill Hill area. <clears throat> and the beavers are back on the big pond on Hillside Road. So we've been in and out of there consistently reopening the culvert, getting water flowing, you know, that whole ordeal. And we've got a great, hopefully, hopefully we'll be good for that for a while so it doesn't overwhelm the road and run over the road. And uh, I had the Fennel Hollow hazmat incident on my report too because I spoke with absolute spill response today. I tried to contact a &R, um William Sisson that came out from a &R to deal with that thing and uh, I was not able to get an update from him but I was able to get from absolute spill response that they, they got the results back and it was number two fuel oil and they also found amounts of um, heavy metals and he said that that would have been like a used hydraulic oil. Um, I believe AMR is the one that released the statement. And don't quote me on this. I'm just going off of what I read and I didn't read it today so I can't tell you that it's accurate. Uh, they said it's like approximately, approximately 200 gallons of, of that material. So as far as new stuff goes, that's So it. can I interject? Absolutely. Um, William Session did for the uh, report the absolute spill did and um, like you said it appears to be a mixture of diesel fuel with additional constituents. Uh, it's been assigned to a DEC enforcement team, uh, and I left them a number or excuse me a message this morning to see. While I don't expect they're going to give me the the full details of their investigation. I just want to stay on top of it and um, see if we can offer any assistance. Okay. And are we are we getting into the discussion of the roads now? Sure, it was on the agenda. Okay. Um, so the last time we met, we discussed uh, the roads not doing winter maintenance, if not giving up the road uh, for for multiple different roads. Um, Know, everybody got a chance. I don't know if everybody got a chance to go out and look at all the roads that were in question that we spoke about and uh, everybody's thoughts were on, on those. Okay, so I have yeah. My initial assessment is we are going to definitely plan for this, but how it got to be kind of road, I have no idea. But they thought it's a big driveway, built a big driveway. Maintain that the driveway. Maintain that the driveway. The only question I had is when we went up to the trailer one way up the top, which I had been in the front, is really bad. I yeah. understand yeah. that, but then there are two houses that are really close. That, Down below. Yeah, but yeah. Like, you're not sure how you get, if you eliminate the whole road, you eliminate them. So I don't know if that's even a possibility. You can't plow off. If yeah. you finish it, you'll be plowed off the side. So, so I was asking, would you have to back up and come back in? That I'm not doing. <laughs> yeah, so if, if you weren't going to do the whole thing, but you're going to do part of it, that means you'd have to back down it. And mm -hmm. that's potentially, that's going to be more dangerous, risky than... Right. than to turn around, that's a, you can make the corner. Is it two homes on the same property? Yeah, one's on both sides. And, and it's, yeah. it's like, it's not that far off, but it's up enough. So I think that they... About that little section, I think you just have to make sure you give that fair warning that you know while you're dealing with traffic, but there's a section like from here to there that they're going to have to uh, be get out onto the horse, right? Those two on the right, one on the left. Yeah. You got two on the left, right. and that, as it goes up and it snakes around to the right, and then you've got that one right there on the right. There's only one on the right, two on the left, and then it's all vacant trailers from that point on. Yeah, and I, you know, Dick's had multiple incidents up there trying to get turned around yeah. he has to go up and he has to turn around to the left like it kind of 
I don't know if I really got into this before. I was trying not to drag this along, um, but I just want to make sure that there's an understanding of the reasoning for this. Like I said before, it's not out of laziness. It's it's out of concern for our drivers, for our two hundred thousand plus dollar equipment. Um, you know, when you're going up to the, the trailer park and you come down, Dick came down two winters ago with no air brakes, no brakes. and the maxis did not lock up and help them. Um, that's a, a Linux road is the biggest problem of them all. Yeah, we just don't 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 plow up up the drivers. I would say that's the riskiest. Yeah, I've been all. Yeah, it's 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 steep. Yeah, it's steep. Uh, fair lane, off uh, fairway lane. Uh, yeah. Excuse me, off of Lakeview, across from the golf course on thirty. Right. Yeah. It, I know it's got, you know, it's a lane and everything, but it, it's one house and there's nowhere to turn around. No. If you back in, you back out. If you drive in, you back out. And it's all on a, you know, I didn't get out there to measure the, the actual grade of Lakeview going up, but you're going from quite an angle to trying to get on flat ground or from flat ground onto quite an angle. And that's just, it's, it's extremely rough. Um, I, I can tell you, I've never actually timed it to see how much time is spent trying to jockey the truck into some any, of these places. We have to research to see if that, when that was, to your point, yeah. made to a class, you know, classification road that right. yeah. town has to take care of. Right. What was it before? Um, right. That's something we'd have to look at first for right. that one. Some of those roads used to loop, right? The loop, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if that particular driveway. No, no, no. I do know. I did talk to Frank Chesley about it because I've seen him Tuesday. And he said the state and to block off the end of the upper road. But that is the right way to the state park. They have the top one? The top, the, the top one is, the, is an extension to the state park. They Ridgeview Lane South. The one up by Frank. Yeah. Frank's right. Yeah, that's Ridgeview Lane South. Right. If you go to the end, it can actually reach the state park. <laughs> you want that closed off. So, right. so okay. that one may be an issue. Let's uh, right. Let's, we got so much to cover tonight. Let's right. table this and, and yeah. talk about it at, at another. Yeah, there's no possibly the next meeting. Let's table this. For the next meeting on the roads for declassification. Okay. If, if, is that okay with the board? Yeah, but 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 it, it, it's on the one uh, Oliver. Um, Oliver Allen. Yeah, off yeah. Of Going down the road. Yeah. yeah. Just across from the bridge. All right, Paul. Did Did you find that, if anything out about? Um, I haven't had a chance to look. I actually thought about it this morning, but I yeah. I didn't look. Okay. Maybe it's my obligation, but we're really not aware. Yeah, we'll have to find out about Fairwood Lane versus yeah. City yeah. when it became our responsibility. Right. <clears throat> okay. That is all I've got on the road report. Anyone have any questions? Hey guys, good job. Yeah. Yeah. I've been using the move for much better. Yeah. Much better. I mean, the potholes are coming back a little bit, but uh, Much all, it's rained consistently. Right? The other day. For anyone that's not aware, we can't go grade road, tear up four to yeah. six inches of a road, okay. and expect it to lay back down and, and bind up tight before the next big rainfall, or, or the road's going to be a complete pothole, unfortunately. And, and like, so, getting, getting hay. What's that? Kind of like getting hay. Yeah, yeah. It's going to rain again today. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. So we, we have been out doing that in between rain doing the best we can with it. Tough summer. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You don't have to stay if you don't wish to. I got some stuff for the the white wayfinding part too. Okay. Do you want to do you want to do that now? Oh, it doesn't matter to me. I'm, yeah, go ahead. Um so we had installed the signs uh, that Sarah Pelkey got the grant for. I don't know. Um for the for the bike trails for the mm -hmm. town fair, I believe it's fairgrounds. 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 I saw yeah. those. 
yeah, we installed those. And um, actually, there's one right across over here, and that one was already bent. And I took some pictures of that and straightened it back out today. But uh, we were able to attach all the signs to the current signposts within the location that they were specified to be in. And uh, we only had to put one post in. So it was fairly quick, simple, and hope it helps someone. That's all I got for that part. Okay. All right. Anything else, Joe? No, unless anybody's got any questions or comments or concerns. Got one comment. I had, um, I had called Paul the other day regarding the C and D debris that was dropped on the side of the road at the junction of Clark Power and Junction Hollow. Someone cleaned it up, so when you guys did it, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Steve. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, I'll stick. Yeah. Okay. Uh, manager's report. <clears throat> so I've got the the board asked the only rescue squad to come and meet some of the board members that you may have not met and have some discussion. And I think there's some folks here from the only rescue squad. So I'd give them the floor. Hi, I'm Debbie Poisington. I am the interim administrator for the rescue squad at this point. Um, we are doing our best to keep the town going as far as the rescue squad. We are, as with every other agency in the United States, short staffed. Um, it is a nationwide shortage. We are advertising, we're in the process of advertising for more providers. Um, I don't know if anybody here in the room is in the medical field, but the medical field is a nationwide shortage for providers and staff. And when you work in the field, you get burnt out very quickly since COVID came around. We're working on trying to work with our schedule to see if we can find a new way to make it work better for the providers that we do have and keep the coverage for the town. We realize that we have dropped calls and not been able to respond to all the calls that are coming for town and our surrounding towns that we cover. Um, our reimbursements are down, as with anybody's medical reimbursements are down. Um, financially, we are okay. So it's not a financial issue. Uh, it's a staffing issue because people are leaving the field faster than they're coming into the field. Two years ago, we had 15 people joining a class. We had waiting lists for people to become EMS providers. Now we have six people joining the classes at a time, if we're lucky, and then they don't even stay. So with that being said, we're doing our best. I know it doesn't feel like we're doing our best, or especially if one of you has been one of the ones that we have missed a call for, or you've waited an exorbitant amount of time for someone to respond for a call. Um, we do apologize for that. Um, I know there was a person in town who never got a response and she did call and complain. Um, we can't control other agencies. The biggest agency in our county, in Rutland, which is regional, has five trucks and there's times that he's only running two. So if that gives you any indication as to what the situation is and the direness of it, that's where we're at. Um, Fairhaven has one full-time crew that she runs. She can keep one truck on the road. And she has a huge roster of people. So it's not just Poultney that's having a problem. It's every agency in the area. We usually we try to keep in contact with all our surrounding agencies and hope that they can back us up when we don't have a crew. We have one full-time per person, Katrina. The rest are per diem. And when we do get other providers, they're coming from other agencies to help us. So they're working for multiple agencies. We have two providers on, one works for regional, two work for regional. Josiah works for regional, Mason works for regional, Cadence works for Fairhaven, Rachel works for a full-time, she's a volunteer. Mike works full-time, he's a volunteer. Mike McLean works full-time and he, he works with us per diem. 
So everybody has a full-time job. It's not like it used to be where you had volunteers who were home all day and could volunteer and just respond on a minute's notice. I work full-time at Rutland and I volunteer a lot of hours to Poultney, both to the squad and to the thrift shop. So it's we're doing our best to keep it going and to keep it covered. Um, Katrina puts in a lot of hours, more than her 40 hours. She did six years of a wonderful job of doing administration for it, and it's exhausting. I've been doing it since April when she stepped down, um, and it's a tough job. It's a very tough job. Debbie, can I ask you a question? Where, Certainly. Where do you see the future of it? Because I know there's been a lot of money we're putting in, and we're wondering, like, where do you see the future of the rescue squad if we're having that much trouble? I know Katrina and I, we, or the board, we had that discussion last year, too, of not getting the support. Maybe more money was going to help entice more members to come in and be a part of the rescue squad. It, it sounds like that. Not it's happening. not a case of the money. Well, yes, the, the, the wages, but it doesn't, wages are not always, it's when you ride in the back of, the bo of a box mm -hmm. and you're being abused, or you're being threatened, or you have people who by, are violent to you, you quickly want to get out of this field. You don't want to do it anymore. And that's the scary part, and that's where it's going. You know, in, in Rutland, regional doesn't send an ambulance to some of the scenes without three people, because somebody has to stay with their ambulance. They can't leave the ambulance because somebody will steal it. We have it easy out here because we don't have that kind of problem yet. I say yet because we're not immune to it out here. Um, so we're trying. I've been asking for quite a while. Mm -hmm. Budget season's coming up. Mm -hmm. And I've been asking for a number of years, very politely, mm -hmm. to meet with the board. Okay. And they have not responded. Okay. We meet every three months. I want to meet them here. Okay. Is there a reason that we have to meet here? I would like to see and get an explanation from the board before over $80,000 goes. I can give you my 990 right now. Because the board we would like to talk to the board members and see what they think about the future of the rescue squad. If it's going defunct or like no, you it's say, not, it's not going to have a hard time getting help. Everyone does. Everyone so does. it would be nice to even just sit down and have a good conversation with the board and see if we can come up with some ways to help. If money isn't a problem, is there any talk about hiring more full-time staff than just Katrina? Or? We're getting ready to put ads out again. That's what we want we've to know done, the board. We've done it multiple times. Katrina has put the ads out. We get one or two people. They come for a while, and then they – it's not a busy – it's not a busy service, so they get bored, and they move on to a busier service. Okay. No, we skirted, or better, or better. We skirted the question that I I'm asked. sorry. Um, I mean, I can ask Walter. I'm asking you to ask them if they would please come. Walter had and plans and was on vacation, and Kathy, I believe, was on vacation this okay. week also. I can ask them. I can see. Um, How many like, board members do you have? Three. That's including you? Yes. So two others. Yeah. Okay, you're on the board. And I am up. also on the board at this so point. We don't even know that. I've been on the board for five years. My name's been in the town report for oh, five geez. years. Actually longer because I was on the board when Beth Winter was a, was the president also. Okay. So um, a couple years ago, and I'm, I'm guessing you know this because you're on the board, mm -hmm. but for some of the public that's present that maybe not know this, and maybe some of our newer board members that might not know the history of um, the town funding to the, and sorry if my back is towards you, it's just, just awkward, I know, but um, it's the nature of the room. 
um, two budget seasons ago, the select board discussed with Katrina as the director of the Pony Rescue Squad, uh, incremental budget um, increases over a five year period. Mm -hmm. um, and two budget seasons ago, implemented the first stage of that five year period. Mm -hmm. And then at the last budget season, uh, Katrina came to the board and said, that's that incremental budgeting is not going to work. We need to uh, double 100% of what the select board budget uh, presents to the voters and voters vote on to allocate towards the potent rescue slide. Mm -hmm. And at that time, uh, some of the, we had some different board members here and some of the board, I think, frankly, all of the board then had some concern about uh, the sustainability of the Pulteney Rescue Squad and increasing the budget, uh, doubling a 42,000 some odd um, uh, allocation to an 84,000 some odd allocation and uh, chose to use uh, 42,000 and change of their ARPA funds to fill that gap for a year period with the representations by uh, Katrina Davenport that she felt with that additional funding, she would be able to bring on more full-time staff. I appreciate the fact that you're saying that um, it's difficult to get staff because I run into it at the town uh, highway department and the village departments as well. So I understand what you're saying about that. Uh, Long-winded question, but what happens if you can't get more full-time staff? Um, because at the time, Katrina felt confidently that, uh, and I won't say the hourly figure, that she could she could attract more full-time staff at the rate that she had stated. Uh, and it sounds to me like you're saying not only the not only the sh the labor shortage, but also the the nature of Pulteney Rescue Squad in the area maybe not being as exciting or busy as another rescue squad that mm -hmm. that compounds the fact that someone might not want want to come to Pulteney. Mm -hmm. So if the allocation is doubled this year and you don't have staff that you're paying a full time, what's going to happen to that other allocation? And what's going to happen next year if you come and the, this board starts talking about budgets in October? And you say we need this, we need another eighty something thousand, and you still have its fully staff. What what do you see happening? Can you look into the future and give us a projection? Just have a crystal ball. I would love to be able to say that in a perfect world we could get all the staff we need. That would be the perfect world. Ideally, I would love to be able to say I would have five full time people on, and I would be able to staff it and be able to have everybody work twelve hour shifts every day. But that's not going to be a perfect world, not in this, not with the way EMS is going. Um, all of our agencies in the area, in talking with Mr. Finger, who runs regional, Wayne Fitzgerald, who runs uh, Fairhaven, they've all majorly increased their payroll to meet the standards. It's pretty hard to buy to get someone to work for $15 an hour when they can go to McDonald's and make $17 an hour. So that's what we're up against, and that's what we've had to look. All of all of the EMS agencies have had to look at that and bring up the pay standards to making your drivers make twenty to twenty to twenty two dollars an hour. We were talking about seventeen. That's what we talked about with Katrina was seventeen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. Okay, that was part of the money because yeah. we knew it needed to go up, and, and that's, that's what, what we talked about. And that's 17. what we're doing, and we're. We're now got. We just now are getting our heads above water to where things are flowing. Our, our reimbursements can take anywhere from three to six months to come in, depending on the the insurance company. Some of them take longer. The VA takes almost seven months for us to get, get sometimes. So money flow. We we're, we're dependent on the insurance companies to pay bills sometimes, mm -hmm. and then to be 
I mean, not that it's the town's responsibility to pay our bills, because if that was the case, we'd become municipal, and we don't want to become municipal. We're an independent, we're a self-sustainable company, and we're doing it on our own. So if that being said, we are putting the ads back out again. Katrina did at the beginning of the year. We're going to do it again, see if we get response, and see what we can do. We're going to, like, like Regional did this just a few months ago. They've got people. Fairhaven's got them. We're going to do it again. We'll put the ads out. We'll see if we get responses. It's like with every job that's out there. Okay. So there, um, you met, you mentioned the fact that you don't want to become municipal because that's been sort of on the peripheral, at least. Have has the rescue squad ever explored becoming municipal, and um, and or consolidating facilities? And that was always. Uh, and I've been in this position for six years, I guess. That's always been since I've been here. Completely, no, we don't even want to have that discussion. The board doesn't want to have that discussion. Um, and I'm not suggesting that that is the solution, um, but to, to hear a struggling um, entity like yourselves not explore other options um, is concerning, particularly given the fact that the town voters vote to, to um, you know, allocate a substantial amount of money every year to your organization. So, you know, I, I hear that you're a standalone facility and I, I applaud the, we want to do it on our own. So, but, but I think the, the voters, uh, and maybe I'm speaking out of line because I'm not on this board, but I think the voters deserve a, a consideration of what else can we explore to make this entity that a number of people uh, depend on in, in this community? So where would you suggest that we would find the, the space to put Pulteney Rescue that would be cost saving? That's so, why we would like to Well, it's, it's funny you should say that because, because we don't pay the last time it, for our building. The last time it was discussed with Katrina Davenport, mm -hmm. Uh, I remember I was sitting right in the seat, and she said, "Oh, it doesn't cost us anything to run that facility." And I'm, and I said, "Just from a quick look at what your your numbers here, and without even using this machine or this machine as a calculator, I was I was seeing five to six thousand dollars a year in expenses that that facility is costing you. So to say we own that facility and it's not costing us any money, I think is but maybe I'm misunderstanding if your, we go your numbers. Someplace, if we go someplace else, it's still going to cost that money because you're still going to have to pay the fuel. You're still going to have to pay the power. You're still going to have to pay the That's utilities. why we want to sit down and talk with the board. Okay. I'm not trying to throw you under the bus. I'm, yeah. I'm just saying that, that yeah. it's always been uh, the response of consider something else no we're our own entity um and now we're here again getting ready to talk about next budget uh year to propose to the voters and i get calls almost every day i'm not getting how come the, what's going on with the rescue squad how come they're not responding do you, um, do you would you like to come and run calls with us that's not what I'm suggesting. That's, that, that's not. A, that's not really. I, I, what I'm answer. saying is no. But um, that's that's what that's our really that's what our answer. problem is. It's not that we don't have the money to keep the the business afloat. It's the case that we don't have the the people yeah. applying yeah. for the job. I I understand. So that. whether we consolidate and go to in with the fire department or come and live out of the town office, if we don't have the call the bodies to run the calls. It doesn't matter where we're housed. That's all discussions we would like to have again with the board. Okay. I will members. bring that. We have a board meeting this week. I will bring that back to uh, the other two board members. But again, where we're housed is not going to change that's, the staffing issues. That's 
And right. that's what the major problem is, and it's countrywide. That's so is it it's better to double up with another town? It's just, if we can't do it, another town can't do it? I mean, I know on my road, Granville came from Granville all the way out to, to the Loop Road. Mm -hmm. is, it, is there another town that's doing the same no. thing, feeling the same pinch that we are? Back, back when Katrina broke her elbow, the beginning of last year, we depended on outlying, outlying agencies to respond. And we got numbers from Washington County. And there were times that this town was waiting 30 minutes to an hour for other agencies to respond. So that's our, that's our fallback. If we condense with other agencies, it could be that. That's what we so, want to yeah. talk yeah. with the board about I, I all right. the possibility. I did put a call in probably two weeks ago, mm -hmm. Long Town Road, for one of my clients up there. Mm -hmm. He had phone. He'd, he'd been lying for three, four hours. So he said, call down I could not pick him up. Try, try. Okay, so I called. I got the, the, the dispatcher, and there was a, only was on the phone, but 25 minutes later, the train goes to the town, town road. There's a lot of situations right. that have come up, and we can speak yeah. about them all mm -hmm. uh, and be here the rest of the night. Mm -hmm. Right. But um, right now, if you would please convey to the board mm -hmm. that we would like to meet with them. Mm -hmm. And it's not for anything but maybe a brainstorm, maybe a better understanding, maybe more eyes see a better future. I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm asking. Okay. And I guess to, to clarify why this board is requesting that your board come to them as opposed to them coming to your meetings is the fact that if there's a quorum of this board, it's considered a public meetings. So, you know, I don't know if you want me to drag my computer so these 30 people that are on there and these 20 people are there. This is just, I mean, that they it's a public meeting that they have to have. Yeah, that's, that's a good clarification too. That's why we would like it to come here. I would also like to say that when I sent the email to Mr. Donaldson wanting to know where our funding was, he wanted to know why I did not notify the town of our restructuring as far as Katrina stepping down as her administration administrator role. And I felt that was an attack on Pulteney Rescue, which I didn't feel was necessary to us. So that conversation that happened via email and I can forward it did not need to happen to me. I was very politely asking for that and that was something that did not need to happen. I'm we are more than transparent and more than willing. I did not know about the board needing to come and wanting us to come. Mr. Donaldson saying that he wanted to meet with the board that was the first I had heard about it. I will bring it to the board on Wednesday when we're supposed to meet. And I will be more than happy to let them know that we want to come in so that you guys want us to come in. I, I, can, not, I can just speak for myself, though. I didn't know when people talk about the rescue, I always thought of it as Katrina. So I didn't know there was a change either. So when people ask me, that's who I said, because that's all I know. So I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't know either. I it's just, been in the town report every year. Katrina writes the, 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 the letter that goes in the town report every year because I read it every year. So I will be happy to convey it to Walter and Kathy. Okay. Thank you when I see them. Thank you. Okay. Tax sale proceedings. Um, so I've reached out to the law firm that ha has assisted us in the past uh, with tax sales and they are prepared to proceed once I provide some additional information. They're prepared to um, start the proceedings uh, that we did a couple of years ago as a whole, where, where we, um, you know, warn, warn the delinquent taxpayers that uh, we are looking for our collection of our funds. So I will work on providing the list that they need to move forward with um, 
initial phase what we call a 30-day letter, which basically says you've got 30 days to become current or we're moving on to the next, the next procedure. So I just want to let the board know that because I know we've discussed that recently. Okay. So you mentioned you want to do something with these trailers, various trailers. Um, yeah, the, the abandoned trailers, I, in the past, I have approached the uh, Board of Civil Authority, and they, they, at the time, were not receptive to me uh, removing them from our tax rolls, because, mm -hmm. as we discussed, I think, in our last meeting, or recent meeting, there are several yeah, yeah. Ab abandoned trailers that every year we're assessing on that the likelihood of ever collecting a tax is pretty minimal. Do we own those or does the people still? No, we don't own any of them. We don't own any of the land that the trails are on. They're abandoned. They're pretty bad shape. They're all broken down the bridge of the hazard, yeah. But, right. Right. There, there are some trailers that I know have been abandoned on other people's properties yeah. and there's a court procedure uh, that those landowners could go and, and get a uh, court certificate deeming them the owners of the property, uh, but mm -hmm. the one particular owner that there's several trailers has been reluctant to do so because the delinquent taxes uh, follow the follow the property that's being mm -hmm. assessed. Mm -hmm. In this case, if he took ownership of the abandoned trailers, yep. the taxes follow the abandoned trailers, even though mm -hmm. he's represented to me that he just wants to dispose of them. Um, but he's afraid of, you know, the, the, he's afraid of those, uh, those taxes being burdened on him. So I'm like, it's I'm like, there's other pieces of the property with not, when nobody's been designed by the tax sale, the town usually takes all bids on. Well, that's just a trailer's mark. Okay. Trailers are on uh, right. the other guys. In the, in the last, in the last round of tax sales that we did, there were a number of trailers and, and actually real estate that uh, because the, the firm that I have assist us with these tax sales is very diligent about crossing all the I's and right. dotting all the I's and crossing all the T's. If they can't find a chain of chain who, who they can give a paper to and say, yeah. we're doing a tax sale on this, right. they, they won't do a tax sale on it. Um, and there was a number of, of those, as I said, trailers in real property that they they couldn't they couldn't find an owner to serve. So they, you know, there were there were some that I know, in fact, uh, not trailers but real estate in a different adjoining town that that town had done a tax sale on some real estate, and I asked the attorney that handled it, did you find this person? No. No, but we move forward with it anyways. Which maybe hey, we need to bring them back right. in front of the board of civil authority. Appreciate it. I mean, I think I think they I think they never depreciate it enough, and I've seen them. I've seen the assessor's office. You know, it used to be a trailer, now it's a shed, and assessed as a shed. Well, basically. Yeah. Um, maybe we need to bring that back in, in front of the board of civil authority. Okay. And now it's down to special event liquor license. Well, back in here. So the clerk has presented me or this board with a permit wedding at Wellback uh, uh, for September 16th from 2.30 to 10 p.m. And then she also this morning there was another one that she gave me. Did you have a license for tobacco juice? We'll get to that one in a second. Oh. Let's finish this first. Oh. I was like, Another uh, an event at the Regenerative Land Holdings for September 2nd, 5.30 to 10 p.m., uh, a catered event there. So if someone wants to make a motion to approve those. What is your motion? I would make a motion to approve both of those. 
Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Any comments or questions by the board? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Okay, there is a tobacco license uh, application for the Dollar General location. And I asked the clerk about this one because in my recollection, the board has never been specifically asked for a, a tobacco license and uh, Betsy Westcott has, has um, advised me that when, they, when the Department of Liquor moved to a online system, they realized that if they had to, if, if you're not, usually what happens is you apply for your beer and or wine license and they they let you. They let the applicant apply for free for their liquor, li or excuse me, for their tobacco license. But in this case, because the Dollar General isn't selling beer or wine, they had to separately apply for their tobacco license. Okay. As, far, as far as I understand it. There's the answer to. Can I just be stupid? When they say tobacco, what is it they really mean? They're selling there. Cigarettes. Cigarettes. So it would be uh, cigarettes and cans, really. Cigarettes. Um, <laughs> Isn't that whole store self serve and limited in my interaction with that store? But how are they going to treat that? I don't know. The way, I, the, way, the way I understand it is that uh, the Vermont Department of Alcohol, Alcohol and Tobacco, there's certain rules you, you have to have your behind the counters or whatever. That's the way I understand it. But like, I don't know. I'm not the expert on that. That's a good question. I, do. I don't know how so that is completely self service. No In question. my understanding, the public might know better than I do. The public needs to do that. Is it self serving? They've got people that can assist. And if they lock it up behind some barrier and that was assistance required, it might be worth finding out if they plan on doing that because just having it exposed to obviously would be an issue. But um, I didn't see anything but self checkout things when I've been there. Of course, there's cigarettes. How much responsibility is that going to be? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Should we ask more questions before we? I don't know. I I haven't. I don't know. I don't know. Let's let's table it until we can find out if it's under some type of security to minors before we approve the tobacco. Does anyone there know, does Dollar General sell tobacco products? I have to like this. Any books, stewards, instruments? Yeah. You have to be 18, right? A motion to table the tobacco license for Dollar General to our next meeting. We'll yeah. find out if it's secure for minors. Do I hear a second? Do I hear a second? Mm -hmm. I thought you made the motion. You're seconding? You made the motion? One of us did. I think I did. <laughs> Any, sec <laughs> Any comments or questions by the board? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Put it on our next agenda. Okay. Back to bills. Uh, just and just to let the board know, we, we did mail out the tax bills last week. Um, they had to be mailed out by August 15th, and they were mailed out last week. So, the yellow, the yellow, the yellow. Yeah, yeah, they're yellow. Please stand, stand up. up. Please stand up. No, I thought it was the village tax. So you don't stick it somewhere, you like that's good. A little bit helps, Mark. Okay. Maureen LeBates <laughs> inquiry into the town owned property on Pennell Hollow Road. So there's a very small piece of property that the town has owned since 2008, I believe, on Fennel Hollow Road in between Maureen LeBates property and uh, the, the Groff uh, property. Um, and she's looking, wondering if the town wants to 
divest itself of the property, wondering if the town wants to allow her to raise horses on the property. Um, I visited with the assessor's office and most, if you look at the um, flood maps, most of that small piece of property, it's, it's, it's under an acre, is in the in the river corridor. Um, so I told her, she sent me a letter and I told her I bring it to the board and asked them how they want me to proceed, if at all, about it. Is she looking to own it? Because the um, house would go through, if I would the town owns it, that goes through a certain procedure. Yes, I know. Um, can you sell it if it's in the flood zone? I mean, you, you can, yeah. yeah. The way I understand it, she just wants to raise horses on it. I don't know. I mean, yeah. would the town need that piece of land for anything else? Um, Not too bad. No, but we'd have to put it in the paper and go through the whole. Yeah, yeah you would have to. I mean, I mean, the pa in the past, we've gone to a real estate agent and said, give us your market opinion on what this is worth. Um, you know, and we the board can direct me to do that, or the board can say no, we want to keep it, or the board can tell me something else. Can the board let someone use the land? I mean, they could, whether that is in the in town's best interest, I would venture to say probably mm -hmm. no. It's it's probably make it look better, of course. It's <laughs> let's uh, let's see what's see what it's worth and if needs be if the board's okay with it and see what it's worth and and uh, if needs be we'll follow the, the protocol on on um, getting a plan purchased by somebody else because the town really isn't in the business of owning property out in you know unless we have our buildings and stuff yeah, exactly. on. Yes, Are you okay with that? Yes. You okay with that? Yeah. You okay with that? Consensus of the board. Okay. Um, uh, I don't have any. You don't have anything else? Before Except for we do have a couple executive sessions. A couple of months before we go on, Aaron, you're here tonight. Um, my apologies, I did not get capping reports uh, together. Um, the amount of time I have this evening got broke up between family work and here and here and everybody else needs their time too. Um, quick things uh, the Conine Family Foundation donation that they made to us to purchase the UTV trailer and a skid unit to help educate people from the woods on all the bike trails and stuff. The delivery of the UTV trailer over the weekend. Um, one of the tenants went down and actually picked it up. Uh, still waiting on the skid unit for the back of it and radios and lights and stuff like that. Uh, but otherwise, making good progress on that finally. Um, the new truck, uh, I told you guys uh, last time I was here, it was getting moved up pretty fast. Well, of course, it hit the back burner. September is when it starts again. Uh, the chassis is there. The pump module is all built for it. In September, it's supposed to go into the factory line to actually get the pump module put on and then start building the box off the back of it. I'm still hoping for a delivery before the end of this year, but they do have 452 days since October of last year. So, um, but otherwise, everything's working on that. The money that you guys approved from the 600 fund for the equipment of that, majority of that equipment is here already now. So. Um, you know, you know, hence was hopefully that truck was going to move faster so we got the equipment. But the equipment is mostly here now, so when that truck does arrive, it will be ready to put all this stuff on we're ready to work. Um, as um, Joel had asked about the radio repeater, their license has been put through and approved. The fire department side of it, we still haven't seen ours come through yet either, so same fence as him, hoping that, you know, ours will finally come through one of these days, so when put it all out with GMP, it all goes up at once, and we're not, you know, having to repeat the repeaters, so. Uh, Good one. So this um, last, um, as you heard the sirens go through, have last 24 hours, plus or minus, have been fairly busy. That's 
by number three and most things are still 24 hours now for us. So, um, but otherwise with the captain's reports, we've been fairly busy, but they've been sporadic enough where we get three, four calls within 24 to 48 hours and then a few days of quietness. So, um, that's all I have for the moment. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Aaron? Thanks, Aaron. Yes, Jack. So we uh, just threw, actually put two new people on the roster, first of July, or start of July. Um, unfortunately, we're losing one that's chasing a, uh, a woman elsewhere. I don't know why, but I, I think I <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, he, uh, we uh, actually had him be just over a year, year plus. He went right through Fire 1, Fire 2, DMT, and all that stuff, but uh, we, we don't as we don't pay, so mm -hmm. there's something to chase, chase it. Um, but we just put two people on. Um, both of them have previous previously served with us, and life came up, and now they're taking a okay. step back up. So they yeah. both have experience, so we just need to bring them back up to speed on what has changed for us, and equipment, and stuff like that. So, can you get do some training too? Can you do some training? No. Train every Tuesday. Night. Yeah. 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 Training. No, I thought training for helpers. Every Tuesday. Every Tuesday. But uh, we're, I, we are slowly trying to work through, I believe, there was a person in the audience here the last time I was here said something about set hours to volunteer to do certain things. We are trying to work out a an associate type membership where we do not need you to be a firefighter, but we're going to train you how to take care of our equipment, paperwork. Paperwork's the big thing. That's where I get bogged down day in and day out. Um, people that hopefully we can bring the skill set into the firehouse that could help us with that type of stuff. We're still trying to work that out and vet it through everything we have to vet it through, including you guys and insurances to make sure everybody's covered in what mm -hmm. they're doing. So um, the biggest thing for me for that is the Tuesday night trainings. I want my guys training, guys, gals training. Yes, we need to take top notch care of our equipment, but if we could push that, a little off to other people that don't want to wear an air pack, don't want to drive the trucks, don't want the pager wake up in the middle of the night, so be it. But if, you know, we were out all night last night, we put the trucks, and we do every call, the trucks go back in. They might not look as pretty as they did when they left. The stuff on it might still be dirty. If I call three or four people and say, hey, could you go up there today at some point and just wash that stuff up, get everything back the way it needs to be, you know, pristine, then when we come back around, the guys come in, they can actually train the firefighter and stuff. So it's one of the things we're trying to work out. So. Yeah. Good. All right. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you. Thank you. Rutland Regional Planning Commission. No, nothing on that tonight. Sarah, do you have anything on the RRPC? Um, no, not for the RRPC. Um, the Regional Board has not met uh, throughout the summer but the meetings will resume again in september um i do have a quick report for economic development for quarter two if you'd like i can present that tonight or we can table it if you have a lot more on the agenda how do you guys feel do you want to hear it tonight or do you want to wait until another evening five minutes how, how long will it take sarah well i talk fast i could probably do five minutes <laughs> <laughs> well, take as long as you need. Let's hear it. Okay, let me see if I can share my screen with you. At the last meeting that I did this for, it was requested that I share the screen and uh, the report. So can you see that okay? Yes. Okay. okay. Um, so this report is for the second quarter of 2023. Um I kept some of the indicator data the same as what I used for the first quarter of 2023. Um, and uh, have, I'm trying to make it uh, relevant to topics that are happening um, or things that are changing in Pulteney. So um, this is um, April, May, and June. And uh, the business update includes four new businesses that have opened um, in that time. Lila's Boutique, Porcupine Bike Shop, oh, sorry, I'm at home, <laughs> Huntington Fine Arts, Damascus International. Uh, there was one business that closed, the Full Belly Deli. Um, sorry, I might need to. Uh, sorry. 
That's okay. A little help here for a second. Ice cream. Where can you hide, Sarah? I can't hide. <laughs> All right, but there, there are other adults. Sorry, you might want to continue on for a second without me. You want to save it till the next meeting? So, all right, sorry. Okay, so the business update includes uh, a business that closed, full Dolly Dolly, we already covered that. Uh, business expansion, I included Bacta Spirits in this. Um, the Bacta Spirits has been advertising an inaugural class um, uh, on campus this year. And uh, we have been working together on some grant grants for the town for the community um, and there have been estimates of uh, several new jobs that are um, available on the campus. And um, uh, so we also have one educational facility, which is actually um, contracted at the very end of the quarter. So July 1st, uh, the Greater Rutland County Supervisory Union is hosting a pilot program at the GMT facility that's on York Street. So that uh, the target audience for that is the uh, supervisory union student body, and it will be opening this um, in this coming um, year uh, school year. So the sales and tax use receipts for the quarter. Um, it's based on the quarter one of 2023, which is available from the state. Um, it was over 11 million dollars, which this was an interesting number to me because it dropped 6.4 percent from the previous receipts, uh, which was quarter one of 2022. Uh, the, four, the gross count of businesses was 45, which was also a drop of three businesses from the quarter previous to that. Um, I don't know um, exactly where where these numbers are coming from, what the drop is. Uh, could be attributed to, but those are the numbers that have um, had um, been reported by the Department of Taxes. Uh, Meals and Rooms tax receipts is still reporting from quarter four of 2022, at which point it was up 8.1%. Um, I wrote to the Department of Taxes today because these these this data, the statistics has not been updated for the town of Poultney in a very long time um, since that quarter took place. And I don't know why, so I'm waiting for them to return that to return my email um, with that information. Uh, so, a quick project update on some of the things that I'm working on: the Vorak grant, which has been uh, we've had for quite some time, um, is ready to complete the final deliverable for the grant, which is an economic impact assessment. We have determined that there's enough money in the grant to contract the work, so we will be doing that and completing it before the end of the year. The Better Connections Town to Trails projects, the project deadline is September 30th, and we had a steering committee meeting today where we um, reviewed the implementation plan that will be presented to the community prior to September 30th. Um, so that project's coming along um, really nicely. Um, there, I'm also working with the village and the Regional Planning Commission on rail trail improvements, uh, which is funded by a Vermont Department of Health Quick Build Grant. So there will be three new benches and a kiosk on the rail trail before the end of September, I'd, I'd estimate. There is also a fix-it station that's coming along, um, and that will be located behind the old uh, village office, the old firehouse. Um, this week, I am working on the Municipal Energy Resiliency Program um, applications for buildings, uh, town buildings, to for that program, which will result in a, an assessment, an energy efficiency assessment which will then enable those buildings to, if they're selected, enable them to be eligible for additional funds um, for grants that are coming this year. Um, some other new development, the charging stations are finished at the GMP York Street location. There's one level two charging station with two plugins and one level three charging station. Um, and I am also, I've been spending a lot of time, well, not a lot, I've been spending some time with community um, trying to identify opportunities for community-led development of youth after-school and enrichment programs. Um, I'm also working with PDRC and sitting on that uh, committee. 
um, I've provided a little bit of help for the Pulteney Murals project, which was primarily um, technical assistance in reviewing the grant application and budgets. Um, and I am also working with a few folks in the community um, via PDRC to uh, address garden spaces, public garden spaces that are in the community, specifically at Slate Quarry Park, Stone, the Stonebridge Train Gardens, and the planting beds on Main Street. So I think you've heard enough from me. Feel free to ask me any questions. Anybody have any questions for Sarah? Sarah, when we were meeting about the youth, the, the kids and stuff, mm -hmm. some of the things they were talking about were mini hubs, like maybe the senior center for movie night for parents and kids. Okay. And I'm going to take that next Monday to, to the senior center meeting and see if they're, if they're you know, um, think that that's acceptable to do. And also the senior center and talking with the priest to see if we can get a mini hub in the, in the old school, the, the, um, not senior center, the Catholic center, Catholic center as another mini hub. For, for kids to do things in. We're also talking about possibly looking at if there was any way we can get the boys and girls clubs during the summer months here and maybe incorporating it with, into our, our rec department also. Just, just, we're just discussing it. Don't know what the dollar ramifications would be, or if it's even feasible. But that's what we're discussing. This meeting is being recorded. The recording has stopped. That, that's what we're, that's what we're uh, looking at now. That's great. Thank you. And I'll keep an eye out. Um, there are different grant programs that can help fund those types of things. It's a little outside of my wheelhouse in terms of grants that I've that I'm used to um, applying for or looking for, but I will certainly start to put some feelers out. Um, for funding sources for programs and um, spaces. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anybody have any anything for Sarah? Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Ice cream, that's what they need. Sorry about that. <laughs> that's fine. Have a good night. Okay, <clears throat> on to public comments and concerns. So Mark Flynn shared a chat on the, the Zoom. Could the board please provide an update on the South Street Bridge if the easements have been completed? At the last meeting, the state said they could put a bridge in if the current bridge were to fail before a replacement bridge was ready. I feel it is worth keeping on the forefront. Thanks for your time, Mark Flynn. Um, the last time I spoke with those folks, uh, they had not completed uh, the easement acquisition. Um, in fact, they they had met with the, uh, I think all or most of the affected landowners that would require easements uh, preliminarily, in fact, um, before they usually would have. Um, so I can check with them, Mark, and report back to the board at our next meeting if there's any additional information. Okay, Mark. Is he good? No. Thanks for your help. Sis. Okay. Yeah, thanks for your help. Sis. How'd you know? Thanks. I can't see that far. Wow. How'd you know that? <laughs> Any other public comments or concerns? Oh, I just have one question. Uh, I don't know if Sarah's still on, but I had asked that. Um, the July 24th meeting, if there's any additional info on the highway garage. And um, supposedly Sarah was supposed to provide something for the next meeting. I don't know if you have an update though, Sarah. She's still looking around. Like that, what's that Blair Witch Project? Remember that movie? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm doing the best I can tonight. Um, so the Municipal Energy Resilience Program that I was talking about um, is the first grant that we would be looking at. Um, that program 
will provide, I, I got a chance to read through the program narrative um, very closely. And it looks like um, if we do that and qualify for, um, and they, they determine that the building is not viable, you can then um, use funds from that program, which will be forthcoming to invest in energy efficiency in a new building. So you could buy the mechanicals, you could buy you know, things that go into a building envelope if you're creating a new building. So um, that is the first step that we have towards, um, uh, you know, funding a new town garage. Um, that's really all I have to report on at the moment. I, I think, you know, the Better Connections project is still, um, one of the goals of that was to help determine whether the site that the town garage is currently on is um, the location that it should remain. So, you know, I'm, I'm also holding off until we have a final report on that to um, to help inform what happens next with the town garage. So maybe we should take the pictures of all the buckets they have in the garage with the rain falling down from the roof. <laughs> okay. Real energy efficient. Mary Sue, does that answer your question? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other con uh, public comments or concerns? Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. I'm it's not that right, and I don't really understand a lot of your procedures here, but the question and the reason I came here tonight was for redesignation of certain uh, rooms, including Man of Black Friday. And do I understand that you're shelving that to the next meeting? Yes. Okay. We're tabling that to the next meeting. Yes. Yeah, because it's kind of lengthy tonight. <laughs> yes. Any other comments or public comments or concerns? Did you say your name again, sir? Collins, K E R N S, last name. First name, Moore, L O H R. Thank you. I guess not. All right. I guess at this time, do I hear a motion to uh, sign the board orders? Yes. You should sign the orders. Do I hear a second? There isn't any hands up behind me, is this? I'm checking. I, um, I, I don't see. Well, while we're there, I'll set the back motion. Any comments or questions by the board? Yes. Right here. All in favor? Any opposed? Motion carried. Nobody? No other hands? Okay. We have an executive session tonight. We have two contractual matters. We're here for another couple of hours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me put that on the record. Or... Okay. 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 Thank you, everyone. It was a warm night. What's that? Yeah, yeah. Alan said he was motion. Oh. The next meeting is two weeks. It's it would be on the twenty four, no twenty. The next meeting 20, is uh, twenty eight. Twenty eight, six thirty p.m. Okay. Do you want to make the motion? Yeah, I'm looking. It's going to the one BSA section three thirteen a one. Make motion that this board finds that the for general public knowledge that the place is for for first involved at a substantial disadvantage of certain matters related to contracts discussed outside of the executive session. For one, BSA section 313A1A, I a, a make a motion to enter into executive session to discuss contract matters. Please stop that one. Did you second it? Yeah, that one. Yeah, you Questions by the board? No, we'll read that for the rest of the time. Any comments or questions by the board? Good night. All in favor? Motion carried. Good night, everyone. Thank you.